18. <coughs> so, so far in this course we have seen uh, how we might sample signals, how we might characterize the sample and hold once we have designed one. This basically includes uh, appropriate choice of sampling frequency and input frequency re in relation to the sampling frequency and so on. And we also learned how to do FFT and all this other stuff. So, once you have sampled the next job is to obviously uh, uh, quantize the input and the basic idea in quantization is quite familiar to most of you. So, if you have an input analog voltage or current for that matter, so the basic idea is that is to classify the input into I mean you figure out whether this uh, input lies within this range or the, that range or whatever. So, you divide the total possible input. So, let us assume that this is the maximum range of all possible inputs that you are expecting. Okay. In other words, your quantizer is designed to work with signal <coughs> inputs in this range 0 all the way to this guy here. This is called the full scale voltage without loss of generality I will just talk about voltages. Okay. By what is commonly called a uniform quantizer what we are trying to do is divide this full scale range into an equal number of bins. So, let us do that. In this case, I divided the input into 8 equal bins and all that my quantization process is doing is, is the following. If the input lies within this range, the output of the quantizer says that you assign some level like that. If the input lies in this range, you say you need to put out some indication saying that it is lying in the second bin, third bin, <coughs> fourth bin, fifth, sixth, seventh and eighth. So, if I plot an input output characteristic so to speak, what is the y axis? It is the output bin number, it is telling you, I mean the output is nothing but it is telling you in which bin the input lies. Okay, you divided the input into the, the total possible input range into in this example 8 possible ranges and the output is simply telling you in which of those 8 ranges the input lies. And so, you could call these ranges anything, the y axis could be called, uh, each bin could be called your favorite name. Another alternate way to do this is to assign numbers to So, since there are uh, 8 possible bins, there are 8 possible numbers going from 0 to 7 and if you have 8 numbers, you can represent them by a 3 bit binary word. So, these are often called output codes because each code represents you know one particular bin on the input. One way of interpreting this is to say that uh, I mean clearly the output is a dimensionless number right whereas the input is is a voltage. So, it is kind of silly to talk about the slope of this characteristic ok. So, to make things easy to understand, we just say the 0 to 7 units of the y axis are simply the, the width of the bin. So, in which case the slope of this staircase becomes a dimensionless quantity. So, the width of each bin is often called the LSB of the converter, LSB stands for least significant bit and 
this basically is, uh, is indicating how much the input must vary. It's it's telling you that if you had an ideal converter to flip the output code by one, the input should change by. I mean, the maximum range of the input change allowed is is this LSP for the least significant. Input. Clearly, this process of uh, mapping the input to the output is a many to one mapping, right? Because many possible inputs can map to the same output, which basically means that this is a process where you lose information. So, given the output, you cannot uniquely figure out the, in, uh, the input. So, there is clearly some kind of error involved. We will come to that a little later on. So, in an ideal quantizer, uh, for example, as shown here, the widths of all these bins are exactly identical. So, if you kind of drew a best fit straight line, you would get something like this. If you joined up, for example, all the midpoints of these codes, you would get a straight line like that. So, what is the error incurred? I mean, if you had an ideal amplifier with a gain 1 and whose uh, characteristic was offset by uh, half an LSB, then you would get the black line shown here. This black, black line shown here is what you would get if you had, if you plotted the output of an ideal amplifier, okay, with a gain 1, but with half an LSB of offset. So, and this characteristic straddles this, this ideal straight line. So, the error involved in quantizing is, uh, how will I plot it? It is the actual output minus the ideal output. So, what is the, uh, can somebody help me with this now? It will start from plus LSB by 2, go to 0, okay, continue to go negative to minus LSB by 2, jump So, this is plus half LSB and this is minus half LSB. Well, a uh, couple of arguments, I mean the, the question that is being asked is the following, right? He says, why do you, uh, how would you conveniently, uh, conveniently assume that this is the ideal straight line? Uh, for example, why not this? So, what well, I mean, uh, the difference between the two is only cosmetic. And I will tell you why that is so. First of all, we know that offset is really not a big deal after all. It can be cancelled. And if you did not assume that if you uh, use the straight line passing through the origin as your ideal straight line, then all that will happen is that this error characteristic will always be, this whole thing will be shifted down. Okay, It will go from 0 to minus 1 LSB, which in other words, the mean value of the error will be minus half LSB, which you can think of as adding to the input straight away. So, please note that uh, uh, offset is in a lot of cases very benign. Okay, It can be corrected, it may not matter at all in many cases. For example, in audio, uh, we know that the ear is not sensitive anyway to anything below uh, uh, 20 hertz if you are lucky and um, maybe uh, somewhat higher if you are not. So, DC offset does not matter. In a lot of uh, systems, there are other sources of offset anyway and there is some, uh, you know, some magic loop which goes and corrects offset in the entire system. So, offset per se is not an issue. Similarly, gain error is also not a big deal. Okay, if uh, you expected the, the gain of an amplifier to be 2 and you got 2.05, nobody is going to kill you. Because again in a big system, there are ways of correcting for offset and gain error, I mean uh, either digitally or uh, some of the means this. So, uh, this is often called the best fit straight line. So, in this example, it is quite obvious that this is the best fit because, uh, you know, you can see that the, the error is not biased. If I move the straight line uh, either to, to the left or to the right, 
the uh, this thing will be biased. So, the characteristic shown below is the quantization error characteristic and uh, and you can see that it lies between plus and minus half LSB in the uh, range of uh, interest that is within 0 to full scale. In practice, and this is the ideal staircase, in practice all these transitions, these are called the code transitions. And define what input uh, voltage output code changes sign. In practice, these code transitions uh, may not be as pretty as this picture here. Uh, they might be different, as in, for example, that all the transitions might be shifted away. So, you can see that the only difference between this and the earlier, uh, the ideal staircase is that the ideal staircase at transition points uh, here. So, these are the ideal code transitions. So, what do we have here now? What is this, what do you see as the difference between the ideal and the actual code transitions. All the code transitions are, are shifted by a fixed number and in this case happen to be about uh, half an LSB. Okay. So, this is called offset error. So, all code transitions are shifted by the same amount. And again, as I uh, keep mentioning, offset error is, uh, you know, it is called an error, but in most cases it is benign. Okay. The next error is what is called So, the ideal transitions were like this, code transitions, alright, and these are the codes. So, these are again ideal code transitions. So, what do you see here? The widths of all the codes are the same, okay. and this is equivalent to having a gain before an ideal quantile. case or not. If I took a box whose input output characteristics were the ideal staircase we first discussed and before that instead of connecting the input directly to that if I put an amplifier with some gain then it is equivalent to stretching the x axis correct. So, these code widths are all the same in this particular case the uh, widths are smaller than that corresponding to an ideal staircase. So, does it correspond to a situation where the so called gain is greater than 1 or less than 1? Gain, gain has to be greater than 1 because I need a smaller amount of input to flip the output codes. 
This is a situation indicating gain error. And if I plot the best fit straight line, how will this look? It will probably look something like this. Whereas an ideal one would have probably looked uh, so this is a okay, best fit for the ideal staircase and this is the actual best fit And as I indicated again, this gain error is in most cases quite benign and not really a problem. A third type of error is the following. And basically, we are trying to do uh, look at what all can go wrong in this, this ideal staircase, right? So, uh, so what else do you think could go wrong? One thing is, uh, I mean, what the first case we saw was all the transitions were pushed by the same amount, the code widths being equal to the ideal code width. So, uh, I mean, a natural, uh, you know, whatever corollary or whatever to this is that different codes transitions could get pushed by different amounts. Okay, that seems like the most, uh, you know, likely thing to happen. So, now if I draw, you know, again a hypothetical case where the transitions are not so uh, the thin line here represents the real transfer characteristic whereas the dark line represents your your ideal characters. I mean, this is just uh, something that is easily conceivable. Uh, in that, it turns out that uh, practical non-idealities in analog circuits and uh, transistors, like things like mismatch and so on, will cause effects like this to occur, which are uh, the code transition is not the same as what you would get with an ideal uh, uh, staircase. But unlike in the case of an offset error, where all the transitions are pushed by the same amount different transitions are pushed by different amounts. That is all that this is. So, in other words, the width of every code is not 1 LSB. Okay? In this case, some of them are smaller than 1 LSB, some of them are larger than 1 LSB. So, I mean, so if I know the width of each code, I have specified the entire characteristic. Correct? So, for example, the width of code 0 some 1 minus some epsilon 1 in this example because the width of code 0 is only this much. Uh, can you comment on the width of code 1? So, width of code 1 is some 1 plus uh, epsilon let me call this epsilon 0. In all these cases epsilon is a positive number. So, in co uh, width of code 1 as you can visually see here happens to be 1 plus some epsilon 1. If you have a reasonably working converter, what would you expect these epsilons to be? Hopefully, if you have designed a, a decent enough converter, you expect that these epsilons to be very small numbers. So, in, when I uh, specify the characteristic to somebody, it does not go on making sense for me to specify 0 0.95, 1 0.05, 1 0.02. 0.98 and so on. We know that you, you would expect uh, a width of 1 LSB anyways. So, what it makes more sense to do is to simply specify the deviation from this 1 LSB. So, this is called the differential nonlinearity.
or often called D and L. And why is this called nonlinear? Why is this? Uh, I mean, whether whether you have a nice staircase or a lousy staircase, it's in any case both of them are nonlinear, right? If you have an ideal staircase, so you can see that if you have uneven code widths, then you can kind of if uh, if you kind of try and fit a straight line locally within a few codes, you can see that that straight line can have a different slope when compared to if you for example had a staircase which looked like this you see that if you kind of fit a straight line around here you get one slope if you fit a straight line around here you get another slope so you can think of it as if you kind of uh, you know go far away from the curve and look you won't see the steps you will see something like that so this is uh, basically you can't fit a straight line properly a polynomial will be a much better fit for something like that so it is equivalent to nonlinearity i mean another way of thinking about it is i can get this non ideal staircase by taking an ideal input passing it through some through some non nonlinearity and then putting it to an ideal staircase right because i mean because i'm stretching the uh, the x axis different to different degrees at different points this is an in indication of nonlinearity and this uh, the deviation of of a code width from the ideal lsb is called the differential nonlinearity as we have defined it now what are the units of dnl if the lsb is in volts it's basically it's voltage but this again is a problem because uh, some converters may have a big full scale some converters may have a small full scale and clearly you can see uh, that what matters is not the absolute deviation but the relative deviation or the percentage deviation so often this is normalized to an lsb so for example so the dnl corresponding to a code k is nothing but width of code k minus 1 lsb divided by the value of the lsb itself so uh, two things to be uh, noted one is that dnl is a function of code and two specifying dnl defines the entire characteristic of the converter okay in some cases when the converter is not designed properly for example you you end up with this situation this uh, i will only draw a part of the characteristic here this is the ideal ramp i mean the ideal staircase and let's say this happened to be the actual guy the line in pink here is the actual characteristic the dark line or the guy in red is the ideal brick wall i mean the ideal staircase i mean this is a portion of an extended characteristic so let me call this code uh, this code say k this code is k plus 1 this code is k plus 2 and this code is k plus 3 so what is the dnl of an ideal staircase it is identically zero for all codes okay now let's see what is dnl of uh, k for the real converter how much is it can i just estimate quickly the ls this is the lsb size 
it looks like say maybe uh, minus 0.3 LSB. DNL of uh, what about K plus 1? Plus 0.6. What about DNL of K plus 2? In the real characteristic, the code K plus 2 doesn't appear at all. So, this is what is called a, a missing code. When you have a missing code, the code width is 0. So, so the DNL is minus 1 LSB. And what is uh, DNL of uh, K plus 3? Yes, it's point seven. yes. How would you ensure that there are no missing codes in the converter at all? Is it possible to put a sufficient condition on the DNL to ensure that there are no missing codes? Less than 1. Is it less than 1 or something else? Mod DNL less than or equal to half LSB will definitely ensure that there is no missing codes in the converter. So, it is sufficient to ensure no missing codes. So, you can have situations where the, uh, the DNL can be greater than half an LSB. In fact, I can show you situations where the DNL can be, in fact, much larger than 1 LSB, but still all the codes are present. One simple example is, uh, this is the ideal staircase, right? Uh, the ideal LSB is uh, 2 units on this paper. Um, if I have something like this, ok. This shows a characteristic where, what is the DNL corresponding to this code? It is 1 point uh, DNL of k, k plus 1 and k plus 2, k plus 3 and so on. So, the DNL of code k plus 1 is some uh, 1 point 2 plus 1 point 2 LSB. But you can still see that the, the, all the codes exist. Uh, the width of the code k plus 2 is precariously close to being 0, but at any rate in principle it is possible to have DNLs larger than 1 LSB, a mod DNL larger than 1 LSB and still have and still have all codes. Okay? And that happens in this particular case simply because you can see that the uh, DNL of, uh, of code k plus 1 is 1.2, but the DNL of code k plus 2 is almost almost minus 1, it is probably minus 0.9 LSB or something like that. Okay? So, if you arrange the uh, DNL numbers in a, in a magical way, it is possible to have all codes and still end up with a DNL greater than 1 LSB. Uh, all that I wanted to say is, if you want to have all codes, Okay, a definite way of ensuring that is to bound the DNL by half an LSB. So, this is a often a measure people try to, uh, people strive to achieve uh, during design. Okay, so uh, they make sure that whatever circuit is, is, you know, the classifier that they build, okay, uh, the thresholds in principle, the transition points. Uh, should move no more than half an LSB. That is what they strive to achieve. And the reason behind the striving to achieve uh, uh, you know a maximum of half LSB uh, models of DNL is to ensure that uh, if the DNLs of adjacent core transitions are not correlated in any way, then a worst case here and a worst case there will still result in some 
you know, you still not have a missing code. Is that clear? So, in practice, as I said, uh, you know, all these things could occur, will occur simultaneously. In other words, there could be some offset error, there could be some gain error, and there could be, and uh, you know, each of these, uh, you know, bin widths or each of these code widths will not be identical. So, the question is, what is this LSB? Okay, we said, we have very conveniently said, the DNL of the kth code is uh, the width of the code K minus 1 LSB divided by an LSB. But all that we have with us is a characteristic like this. Let us say you had some characteristic like that. Okay. From this, what can you say is uh, 1 LSB? How do you define an LSB? I mean, I gave you this box which is supposed to uh, classify the input into several bins. You know, you put uh, V in on the x axis, you find out what code comes, you draw a graph, you got some graph like this. Hmm? Fair enough. So, the question is, what is the size of an LSB? So, one way of uh, doing this is to say, I will find this point which is the last transition and I will find the first transition. In, uh, if I have uh, n codes, how many transitions do I expect? If I have two levels, I expect one transition, right? So, if I have n codes, I will, uh, I will see n minus 1 transitions. So, what do you think is a, uh, re is a reasonable way of defining an LSB? This is the first transition and this is the, if you have, uh, if you represent the final output by a binary word with n bits, okay, that basically means there are how many bins? There are 2 to the power n bins. So, this is the 2 to the power n minus 1 th transition. So, uh, what do you think is a reasonable way of uh, defining an LSB? Okay, so one thing is to say, okay, for example, if I had uh, a, a four uh, level, so this is 0, 1, 2, 3. So, this is the first one, this is the third transition, right? Uh, how many bins will be there, should be there between these two transitions? If you have an ideal staircase, how many bins do you expect between, this is, uh, this is two bins or two, uh, two LSBs, okay. In general, this should contain how many LSBs? This should be 2 to the power n minus 2 LSBs. So, you find, you know this voltage, you know this voltage, you divide that by 2 to the power n minus 2 and you know, that is a reasonable uh, way of, of saying that is within my, uh, within quotes, my average LSB. Correct? So, uh, in other words, if you, uh, if you go and do the math, you and you plot an ideal staircase, you will get, you know, uh, something which kind of starts uh, its first transition here and the last one here and all the, uh, the code widths in the middle will be, will be uniform. And the width of each code will be this voltage minus this voltage divided by 2 to the power n minus 2. That is one way of, seems like a fair way of doing it. Another way of doing it is the following, which is, uh, you have this, this weird looking staircase, right. You fit a best fit straight line, I mean you fit numerically a, a straight line like this. So, what does it mean to have best fit? What do you mean when you say best fit straight line? The mean square error between the straight line and the actual uh, this weird staircase is minimized. So, uh, I mean that can be computed numerically. So, once you have have the uh, best fit straight line, okay, how does that help you? 
I mean, when I tell you that you have the best fit straight line, what? You know the straight line, so you know the slope of the, slope of the straight line, which means that you will be able to figure out how much change in the x-axis is resulting in one core change in the y-axis. So, from that you can go and compute the LSB. This is the best fit straight line is often preferred. Okay, the reason will become apparent uh, in the next class when I continue on Tuesday. All right.